Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Indum. How are you doing this morning? Uh, good morning to you. Uh, I'm doing well. Okay. Now, um, my first question uh, for you is you've seen the results so far. At what point did you think it was um, reasonable to call Nana Ado to congratulate him? Well, you know, um, I've been in many elections before from assembly level to parliament um, and to the presidential level. And you always look for certain uh, indicators. And in this case, with the, on the presidential level, when you see a political party win across the country um, in all the 10 regions, and you also look for certain constituencies, one, uh, where in the case of the MPP, Nanako Fuado, Western Region, <coughs> Central Region, certain seats in the Northern, um, Upper East and Upper West Regions, you put them all together, and you also look at the the, 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 the parliamentary majority, um, <coughs> and the feedback coming from our own uh, constituencies. It, it for us, it's, it was very clear that he was either going to win an outright majority, um, 50 plus one, uh, or will still be ahead, um, even if the, 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 the contest would go to a second round. So in, in, our, in our estimation, <coughs> he would win and he would have done enough work to get um, the, the, the confidence and, and the votes from the majority of Ghanaians. Right. Were you disappointed at the kind of um, results uh, that you saw for the PPP uh, parliamentary candidates and yourself? Uh, because you crisscrossed this country, uh, we saw you work hard, for instance, in the three northern regions, in the Volta region, uh, you inaugurated some rice mills as well. So there was every indication that you were going to do very well um, compared to what you did in 2012. Are you disappointed? What do you think went wrong? Did, do, do you feel that the voters just listened to you and urged you on, but really and truly, they were not going to vote for you? Well, if you compare our results um, this year to 2012, it's a much better result. However, it is not the kind of result that we were looking for. And um, we are not discouraged. Um, yes, we are disappointed. But we campaigned um, on, on, on the note of change. We, we wanted a change. And um, obviously, um, the, the NPP and the other parties also campaigned for change. So interestingly enough, uh, what we would say, <laughs> we will go to some uh, communities and hear that the NPP is saying the same things. Uh, whatever that we do, we even saw signboards that also has YRSSM on it for MPP. So we all campaigned on a platform uh, uh, for change. And it just so happened that the change wind blowing uh, went their way. Uh, and, and it happens. So it is not something that we can grieve over or be saddened uh, about. Uh, we want a change and we believe that the change is happening. Uh, we would have wished that that change uh, had come our way. What I am most unhappy about, however, is with our parliamentary, uh, uh, the parliamentary candidates. They worked so hard that we were certain that there were certain seats, five to ten, that our people uh, should win. Uh, unfortunately, that didn't happen. Some of them were caught up with, with the change element where uh, MPP had never won those seats before, <laughs> but won. Uh, and, and then there are other instances where, um, you know, after I had made my last visit, uh, President Mahama also went there. And they went there with resources. Uh, unfortunately, I kept telling the people they were going there with money from our tax, tax uh, uh, payers' funds. Uh, and in the last minute, um, it didn't work for us. Um, but our people are not discouraged. Uh, we believe the change is happening. We also believe that the agenda that we were carrying, uh, uh, the NPP and the NDC had adopted some of them 
Uh, fortunately, the NPP uh, is also carrying some of our key agenda items, including the election of district municipal metropolitan chief executives, which we hold dearly, which we continue to advocate for. Uh, so our agenda items, for us, it's important. Yes, we would have preferred to win, but in the end, we want the agenda to be implemented, and we will do any and everything to ensure that that agenda uh, is indeed implemented, and we will become a strong advocate outside uh, of government, uh, working for our people. And those communities that have supported us, we promise them that any community that supports us, that votes for us, we will help them. And so if you look in my own constituency, in KEEA, uh, the people that let us down, uh, they, uh, I don't want to mention their name, there are four traditional areas. One of the traditional areas uh, let us down in a significant way. The other ones that voted for us, they will see some massive development effort that we put in there for them to know that, you know, what we say we do. Um, and, and there are some other communities around the country that we are going to go there, even out of government, provide them with water, help them with their roads, help create jobs, and do other things. Because politics, in my view, is not all about um, being a president or an MP or whatever, but serving the public good, making sure that people, uh, they get the development that they need either through advocacy or real projects on the ground. And we're going to do those things, and people will know the character that we, we carry um, and, and the sort of public... Um, for instance, um, you, you talk about KEA and how you were disappointed there. Um, what went wrong in that area, in your estimation? Well, the KEA... Um, uh, you know, it is not over yet because we uh, intend to challenge the results that are there. Some of the results coming from this one, one uh, of the traditional areas are unbelievable, are unbelievable. And so we have called and are examining all the pink sheets. And should we feel uh, extremely dissatisfied, which we are looking that way, then that, that uh, result uh, it would be heading for the, for the law courts because we, we, you know, it, it is just not possible. The kind of results that has come from there, which has uh, tipped uh, for now on a provisional basis, uh, the race for the, uh, for the NDC candidate, we believe that our candidate, uh, who is presently number two, uh, should be the one that is declared the winner. The, the people just didn't like your candidate. They preferred um, uh, the NDC's candidate. No. I'm saying that in one traditional area, mm. there are four traditional areas in KEA, mm. uh, and we carried, we carried um, particularly Elmina and the other surrounding areas. But there's one, one traditional area where the results we believe uh, cannot be true, cannot be correct. Okay, it can't, just can't be. And it is those results that have tipped the, the election in the favor of the uh, NDC candidates. You, you, you should realize that in 2012, our candidate was, uh, was a poor fourth, okay, in that election. And today, they are talking about a difference after 50,000, 56 or whatever thousand uh, votes of about 3,000 between our candidate and the NDC candidate. We believe that some, some votes have been dashed to the NDC candidate that he didn't deserve. And we also believe that some extra votes have gone in from that uh, traditional area, which shouldn't be uh, possible. Dr. How, how is that possible that it, they were dashed to the NDC's candidate? How, how is that possible? Uh, Nanaba, you get involved in this politics at the ground <laughs> level and you will know uh, how, how that is done. Uh, that is why we, we are vigilant. That is why you examine things. And even when they were counting, uh, there were p uh, votes being put in certain people's columns 
that that shouldn't have been. So these discrepancies come. You have to be vigilant, and and that is how our people. All right. So we are talking oh, to Doctor Papa. Well, for the most part. Mm -hmm. We are speaking to that, that Dr. Papa Kwesi Indum, the presidential candidate of the PPP, who's been assessing his performance. And uh, we apologize for that short break. We'll go back to Dr. Indum now. Uh, Dr. Indum, another question that I have for you. Uh, you worked with... Um, President John uh, Ejekumko for um, when uh, he was in charge of this country and you mentioned earlier um, as we were having this conversation that uh, some of the things you were advocating for the change that you're looking for the NPP was also canvassing for votes on the same basis on the same foundation does that mean that you will be open to work uh, with the NPP if Nana Adodan Kwekufuadu is declared winner of this, uh, this election? Uh, that, that, is, that is not part of my agenda. Um, let me be very clear. I, I, I applied to become president. Um, I have been an assembly member elected. I've been elected a member of parliament. I've been an ordinary uh, member uh, of, of an administration, a minister, and then I've been a cabinet minister. Um, it, it's the presidency I want. So I don't want to be talking about anything else at this stage. Um, besides, I'm leading my political party until this election is officially declared uh, over. Uh, so I don't want to have any other talk uh, come my way. I want my people out there to know that I recognize the hard work that they have done, uh, the good work that they have done, uh, the image, the good image that they have created for the Progressive People's Party, even though we all uh, are not happy uh, about the results that we obtained. Uh, but in life, it happens. You win, you uh, but we have lost with our heads up. And we are strategizing. Last night, our national committee met. Uh, we have started our, uh, our review of, of what happened, uh, what, um, if anything, we could have done something uh, about to get a better result. And then we're looking ahead. We're looking ahead, not to 2020, but we are looking ahead to when a new administration comes in, what are the sort of things that we are going to do to be positive advocates for all Ghanaians, all Ghanaians, and to ensure that um, the rights of everybody is upheld, uh, that opportunity is given to people uh, to reach their fullest potential, um, and, and that jobs can be created for, for people all over the country. So we are going to be strong advocates for uh, a, a good Ghana, prosperity for Ghanaians. Uh, that's what we're interested in. None of us went into this uh, to look for some job from uh, an NDC administration or MPP administration or certain things here and there. We went into it to ask the people for their mandate. Now that we know we didn't get their mandate, we are going to find other means uh, to let the people know that we are still with them. Okay, and what have you made of the back and forth between the NPP and the NDC from um, yesterday? Uh, th there's been one press conference after the other, both claiming that they are in the lead. And you called Danado Dankwe Kufuado yesterday to congratulate him. And you say that you looked at the figures and it looked like it was pointing in the direction of a victory for Danado Dankwe Kufuado. Would it have taken anything from your congratulation if you had waited for the EC to declare him a winner first? Well, you know, the EC declaring a winner is a formality. And, I, and yes, I, if we, we had been in, this, in the same situation where either NDC or NPP, uh, where, where they are now, we would have also been out there, uh, you know, selling our message to people and letting, letting people, you know, keep hope alive that w we had won. So I don't blame NDC or NPP for holding press conferences or uh, keeping <laughs> hope alive for their people. That's normal. That's, that's human nature. But it is also normal for media people, for independent observers, for political parties to take a look at the results because the results are there. <laughs> you have the pink sheets, 
You have what is what is happening at the collation centers. We have what is happening at the what had happened at the polling stations. <laughs> the, the results are there for anybody who wants to add them up to add them up. So any one of us can add them up and, and, and see the sign. And if the sign says it is this person, well, we, we want things heading in the right direction. We also don't want anyone to cause mischief. So in my, in my view, uh, what the numbers were telling me and have been telling me and are still telling me is that it would be a victory for Nana Kufado. If I am wrong, well, so be it. But right now, that is the uh, that, that is a position that I hold, and I have acted on 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 that position. And there's nothing wrong with it. Um, and so, uh, if, for example, the EC were to come and show us some numbers, or that these numbers are that nobody had 50 plus one, and we had to go for a runoff, well, we will all participate in a runoff. Whoever wins the runoff, uh, we will congratulate them. This is, this is how life is. Okay, now, what your thoughts on the um, voting uh, day uh, events? Um, wh what did you make of the process? Uh, many hold the view, in fact, the majority of the people hold the view that it's one of the best elections we have seen in this country. It was um, generally very peaceful, um, it went according to plan. But the PPP, for the PPP, uh, what did you make of the process on that day, on December 7? Well, N N Nanaba, I don't agree. You see, free and fair doesn't happen on, on the day of voting. Um, it doesn't happen there. W what happens there is, is a consequence of everything that has happened from whenever we started campaigning. Uh, but also, it, it has been happening, uh, the situation has been shifting a certain way uh, for the past two, three years. Uh, you know, Ghanaians sometimes, we don't seem to understand that when you put a, an administration in office, you must hold them accountable. They can't misuse our money. Uh, when we were complaining that, uh, why? Why is the Electoral Commission avoiding the national identification uh, or database? And we're asking John Dramani Mahama to give the NIA money so that they can complete the, uh, the registration of, of Ghanaians and non-Ghanaians. Uh, many people didn't pay us any heed they didn't pay attention. Um, and so we've gone into this election with a faulty uh, voters' uh, uh, database, okay? And that, that is a part of the problem that we have experienced. But also, uh, if you see the massive vote buy-in and also the use, the use of our, our state funds by the NDC and John Dramani Mahama all over the country, all over the country, uh, you can't tell me that, that we, we have an election that is fair. Uh, it can't be fair. I pay more tax than John Dramani Mahama, and it's, it's my money he's using and has used uh, to fight his campaign. Uh, so there's no fairness in that. Uh, but on the day of voting, if you had walked the streets with me in Almina, on the day of voting, you would have seen young men and women bunched up in several different corners um, who haven't voted, and you ask them, oh, uh, we are waiting for you. What are they waiting for me for? They are looking for money. Their money before they can go and vote uh, because they have been prepped up and they have been uh, conditioned to, to understand that you get something before you go and vote. Uh, and this is part of what the NTC and other people have been prepping our people up to, to, okay. to understand. Okay, Dr. Andrew, on that, on that one, um, how do we change that? Because you're not the only one complaining. Um, yesterday, for instance, we spoke to uh, one MP, one NDC MP, George Lowe, uh, who also said the same thing, that people are expecting money from you before they go out to vote. How do we change that psyche uh, of some voters who think that they need to be paid uh, instead of them knowing that it is their uh, civil uh, civic responsibility to step out and vote? Well, then, but that, that is the, the, the problem of Ghana. When we vote people into office, they go there. Uh, they don't do anything good for the ordinary person. Okay? And the ordinary people, they are, they are in the majority. They don't see any benefit. Um, and so they want their benefit the day of voting or before they vote. 
So that's why you go to many places and say, no road, no vote. No light, no vote. No water, no vote. Because they know that once the voting is over, attention is gone. No one is interested. They have voted somebody into power, but that person won't do anything for them. So when you have government after government come and not deliver to the people wh what their basic needs are, that is what you would, you would get. And also, when we have a, an education system where the majority of our people don't get past junior high school, so they can't get any meaningful jobs, so they are poor, they are hungry, they are desperate, okay? And the only time they have the opportunity to hold somebody to ransom is election time, okay? That is what you get, okay? And that is what we're hap what's happening in, in a country like Ghana. And look, what was John Dramani Mahama boasting about? Fly over, fly over, Kwame Nkrumah Circle, fly over. And you have people in Upper East and Upper West, and which I'm not surprised they lost some seats there. And some of those places where I have been, where even common water, common water, they, they are still digging holes um, in, in, in the ground so that with some hope, some water can come. And then the rain will come. They, they don't have that. And yet you build, build a flyover here. You go and build another fancy, fancy project uh, at Kaswa. Uh, th then you come and build um, just behind me here. Uh, I like a hospital, but why do you spend so much money to build a fancy hospital in Accra when people all over the country don't even have a simple chips compound, a simple clinic in my own hometown, Elmina? It's just a small health center, not even a, 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 a clinic, okay? So when the ordinary people don't have anything. Um, what do you expect that they will do? They, they will hold us to ransom. So when it comes time for, for voting, they will come. Anything you give them, that's what they are looking for. So you can't ask those people to just listen to the words that you are, you are saying. They will listen to everything. They will, they will clap, they will dance, they will be happy, and so on and so forth. But in the end, they will say, eh, eh, nah, yina, they, 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 it, it, it just... You know, that has become... But, but when I go to the U.S., I'm envious. I've been to a number of uh, uh, people, people running to go to Senate or Congress or City Council. You go there, a, a neighbor, somebody has invited all, other people to their home. Uh, and some drink. Uh, and, and then they put a bowl or something, they, they put money in it. The candidate comes, maybe spends some 30 minutes or so, talks to them. They thank them. They give him a contribution. He goes away. Uh, you know, here, why? You pay for the people to come and listen to you. you eat or drink. When they go, they say, oh, something small. Uh, why? Uh, you want to go and, you are asking to go and serve them. So many people, they spend all of their monies and more. By the time they are elected to go to parliament, they are broke. They are in debt. All right, that brings me and to so my now next they question. Too, they, too, they too goes there. They, they too, they go there. For the four years, they are looking for opportunity to recover their money. So what sort of a system are we running? Okay. It brings me to my next question. Um, I pray you tell. How much did you spend on your campaign? Well, I don't know yet. We have a treasurer. And, and I'm sure that um, in, uh, by the end of January they would collate uh, everything. Uh, because we, remember, PPP has been the only political party that with consistency, after every election, we file our returns. So we will. And then when we do, please uh, get back to me. We will, we will make it public for everybody to know uh, how much money we spent and, and, and where we got our monies from. Yeah, it will be interesting. I'm, I'm, keen, I'm, keen, I'm keen on that. If nothing at all, we want to be an example to the other people so everybody knows that we didn't go anywhere to steal, we didn't go anywhere to do strange things, uh, to have the little monies that we use for. Okay. Now, um, uh, Dr. Indum, I, I want to find out your expectation of the next administration, uh, whether it is a continuation for John Dramani Mahama or uh, an incoming Nanado Dankwe Kufuado. What are your expectations of them? Because you have raised um, certain issues. You've pointed out challenges. Uh, number one, with our education system. Number two, uh, with job creation and 
among other things, what do you expect them to do in four years to fix these issues you identified that inspired you to run for president? Well, there, there are some very, very specific things. Everybody in Ghana knows that I, I will be pushing and therefore will be pushing the next administration for some amendments to the Constitution so that we can elect our own DCEs. So that's something I, 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 for me, I would be very happy the day that happens. And I would think that my being in politics would have been worthwhile when we give the ordinary person out there the opportunity to vote for their DCE. And then our party, we, PPP, we will encourage our people to participate in it so that we, we can win seats there to be DCEs and show Ghanaians how you manage affairs at the local level for the people to benefit. So, so this, that is an, an opening that I'm hoping the next president will put their name in history as opening the way for Ghanaians. And number two, uh, we are saying that the, the Constitution, we need to bring on board an independent prosecutor so that it shouldn't happen again, that somebody goes to steal our money or take our money somehow. And because they belong to a certain political party, they go free. We want our monies back. So I'm expecting that that is something that we work on vigorously. And even, even before a constitutional amendment, uh, the next administration should go after everybody who has taken our money. We want our monies back. So, so that's, that's a big expectation that I have. Another expectation is that the education system, it can't just be for those who can afford uh, to, to pay their way. Um, I come from a family of teachers. So uh, somebody will look at me and say, why is he talking that way? I know what I went through to get to where I am. So the way should be opened for every child in Ghana to go to school all the way to the end of senior high school. All the end, so that the minimum education level in Ghana should be senior high school level, not uh, junior high school. So that is number three. And then I want the state's purchasing power to be used to support our own entrepreneurs, our own business people, so, so that I've, I've, we ask for a rice revolution. I want the next administration to work with people like myself, not just me, but people like myself, so that those of us who are in, in, in willing and are investing in rice mills all over the country, that the way can be opened to support them and to support the farmers, because I believe in four years we can produce all the rice that we need in Ghana right here in Ghana, and we wouldn't need to import one grain, one grain of rice. And, and one day I'll bring you, so that you can show to the people, a Jumorua rice. Uh, it's available. I'll bring you one, <laughs> so you can take a look and, and, and show people the, the quality it is, uh, and so on and so forth. We can do that right here in Ghana. So it's not just the rice. It is having yam chips factories. Uh, it, it is having uh, the processing factories for maize. So you don't have to go and buy raw maize, take it to Nikanika. Uh, that it, you have a factory. It, 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 it dries the maize, uh, it processes the maize, it bags the maize. So whenever you need it, it is there. It is there and doesn't rot. So there are many things that we can do if we use the state's purchasing power and encourage, encourage our own people to do more. Instead of always somebody wanting to import something and get some small, small percentage uh, here and there. Um, it, it, it doesn't work. This country can work. For me, it, it cannot be a difficult matter. I don't know why we have made it so difficult to make this country uh, become... Uh, it, it's just not, not right. It can be made better. Dr. Indrum, uh, thanks for speaking to us. My name is Kafui Day. Um, on your campaign, uh, you made a really interesting statement where you said people would suffer and suffer and suffer and suffer and suffer and suffer if they brought in the wrong leader. What exactly were you saying? Well, you know, and, and it's interesting. Um, I went to a church service um, the night before the election. And the priest, as if he had been listening to me, the priest uh, said to the people, well, you, the people in Ghana, you say that it's God who chooses the leader. And he says, listen, Sometimes God also looks at the character of the people and decides to, to give them a, 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 the leader to match their character. So sometimes he gives you someone to punish you so that you will learn, you learn that you should do the right, the right things. 
and stop doing the wrong things. Uh, so, so I also have the belief that if you vote for the right person, you benefit, you benefit, you benefit. If you vote for the wrong person, you suffer, you suffer, you suffer. Well, I had believed in the election that the right person was Papa Kwesi Indom. People thought otherwise. Well, let's see who comes and let the person deliver and let's see whether they will suffer and suffer and suffer or benefit, benefit, benefit. Whoever wins, do you think will still be suffering according to what you believe? It depends on how they, how they, they, they perform. Uh, some people, they, they change. Some people, they listen. Well, I hope the next president will listen. And I also hope that that, that person will have an inclusive uh, mindset so that they encourage everybody. Um, if someone is an NDC comfort today, I want the next person, if, 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 if that person is the Nakufado, as I believe it, it will be, that he should be all embracing, offer opportunity to everybody. No matter where they come from in the country, no matter their religion, no matter which political party they, they, they came from. Look, the things that I have been doing, I'm a PPP uh, leader, but I've been creating jobs all over the country. Uh, uh, sometimes I'll go to places, I want to get land to put up uh, a branch of our bank, and some uh, people, politically inclined people, would frustrate our attempts to buy land, not to take land, buy land, to build, to put a bank there, to put a factory there. You know, uh, now, you, you wonder, all those things that we had done on the business side, um, did it go to my mem the members of my family? No. It didn't go to PPP members. It went to Ghanaians. So if everything is done, so anyone who wants to invest, invests. Anyone who wants to do the right things, does it. All of us will benefit. All of us. So I want the person to come with inclusive mind, okay, inclusive mind, and help everybody because in the end, if good things happen in Ghana, he can stand somewhere and say, when I was president, these are all the wonderful things that happened in Ghana because I, I provided the right leadership. Okay, can we that, that is what it should be. All right. Can we talk about the PPP now? Um, of course, you will be contesting. I'm not sure you, if you will still lead the PPP in 2020, but the PPP is here to stay, uh, basically. Uh, can you tell us what the plan is for your party for the next uh, general elections? Well, you know, we, we are a party of young people. So we are now even going to uh, start an education for our young people. Uh, to hopefully we will do twice a year some sessions around the country for our people to understand the constitution, to understand democracy, to understand our policies, to know what is it that they should do at the grassroots level for the people. We want them to, to become better trained for the future because in my view, me, I'm, I just have a few more years to go. The, 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 the young people we must bring them up, and we must bring them up properly. We also are going to try and help as many of our members as possible to get jobs, to get jobs. Because I don't believe in professional politicians. We want our people to be working so that they can show themselves to be examples. When I go to my hometown, Elmina, I, I, sh I show people, look at this one. He's been following NDC since 1992, and look at where he is. He's still shouting NDC, NDC, NDC. Look at where he is. Look at this MPPV one. He too, look at him, look at where he has been, and look at our people. Uh, many of them, they are employed. They are able to take care of themselves. That's what we want to do. We want to have the PPP people to be employed. And we'll find jobs here and there for them. And, and, and we want to show that as an example to people. So we are going to grow our people. We will eventually, we'll have seats in parliament. Eventually, we will hold the presidency. And I hope I see that in my lifetime. And, and, and that's how we want to do it, as a long-term long uh, project, uh, do things in the right way, and have people who will serve their country with just service in mind, and not going to take uh, from the country. Does that mean uh, you'll so be I hope the those party? Who will be leaving, I hope those who will be leaving office, they would have learned some lessons. Uh, those who will be coming in, I hope they, they would have seen what those leaving uh, are going to go through. Uh, and, 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 you know, NDC and MPP people, sometimes they think they go into office, they are there forever. Everybody should know that it's not forever. It is when you're doing something in the private sector, that one can be forever. But in government, it's not forever. You come, you will definitely go one day, one day. 
And so when they go there, I hope whoever comes next, they will go there with the thinking that I have four years. I must make good use of the four years. I must show a good character to the people, good attitude to the people, not go there insulting people left and right and thinking that, you know, this world belongs to you. Okay. The, uh, from your submission, is it fair to conclude that you will be leading the party in 2020? Oh, you cannot uh, reach that sort of conclusion. I, I will be there for my party. I will be support. What role I play, that one, let's leave it for the future. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Papa Kwesi Indum.